Okay, so Stuart, if you're ready, come on up. Stuart's got a very interesting story for us. He's just recently been apprehended and has an exciting story to tell us. So put your hands together for Stuart Brown, please. Hi all, how's it going? Uh, before I talk about what my story of what's just happened to me this last week, um, I originally was here to talk about cannabis and terpenes in particular. Now the idea of uh, terpenes and cannabis are uh, something that's quite new in the world of what everyone's looking into and their medicinal values. Well, I've been looking into them for quite a while. I'm just wanting to share what I've been able to figure out and a lot of it relates to medicine making and how to enhance your medicine. Now, with cannabis in its raw form, THCA and CBDA, as the primary two, they are highly in the the terpenes, limonene and pinene, limonol and mycelene, and actually getting into the receptors. So yes, they're there, and yes, when you consume the cannabis raw, you definitely are getting them, but you're not getting the same quality as when the cannabis is heated up, either EG vaped or smoked. Because that's one of those terpenes from the cannabis plant specifically actually are the most effective. So then they ask, begs the question what happens when they're decarboxylated, which is when the cannabis is being activated, so the acids are being dropped off. So that's THC, CBD, oh, CBD, sorry, no way. Now, those terpenes are gone. They're gone. You, they, you can't get it back from the cannabis plant, they're gone. Once you've activated the cannabis, they've made it off. So, and of course you can't if you're doing a nice propylene extraction, you sure as hell can't capture those things safely. So, the best thing you can do is if you are making your oils into medicines, is enhance them. Now, the main three or four or five, depending on how far you really want to go into it, are lime and egg, so just think lemon, lime, pine, pine and egg. And those, those two alone open up the cannabinoid receptors immensely. And you can find them in many different natural herbs that have other medicinal qualities as well. Like a lot of other medicinal qualities as in anti inflammatories, anti spasmodics, and the list goes on. So by putting them back in, you're actually enhancing your cannabinoid receptors, CB1 and CB2, and being able to absorb these into your body. And once it's in your body, it's in your body and it's doing its good. Healthy mind, healthy body. So the more you get in, the better. Of everything, not just THC or CBD, depending on which one you're trying to you know, strain or chasing. And personally, I don't believe in isolate, so I believe in whole plants. So if the plant doesn't have both, it ain't worth anything, in my opinion. Now, there's another cannabinoid that's sort of like just come onto the picture called hashishin. Now, hashishin is a pretty interesting one because it actually is found that the way they dry it is how you capture it. In Afghanistan and Morocco where the hash is more relaxed and mellow, uh, what's happened is they just realised that the mycosine is actually turned into a hashishin. Now the hashishin actually attaches to the CB2 receptor, more like the CBD, but yet a THC, CBD, THC receptor into the CBD, which will give you a more mellow high and a more relaxed time. Now, traditionally, most people that I know, we all grow and dry our cannabis, or we grow and dry our cannabis in the dark, and we use a fan and we're using aeration system so it doesn't go moldy, da 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 da. But with this, is, this is what they're doing, this is overseas, because they're chucking their cannabis out to dry on top of rooftops in Afghanistan, where it's, the heat is just absolutely smashing down on it, and it's oxidizing the cannabis. And when that occurs, it actually changes the cannabis into a more relaxing, less psychoactive THC like, more CBD like, but yet still getting the THC. So these terpenes are very, very valuable in their basic form, just opening up the receptors. Now, I make medicine for myself. I've got three spinal injuries and tortured my body through snow skiing for two and one as a young person. And without what I take, Daily, I don't think I could function, let alone driven two hours to get here, let alone stand up and talk like I am. Um, I've got very bad spinal injuries, but 
That's a different story. Now, what I found is that BCP, which is a cannabinoid, otherwise more commonly known as peppercorn, and black peppercorn in particular is rich in BCP, which is beta carophylline. Now, beta carophylline is one of the most powerful cannabinoids, I believe, in the human, in the body, outside of the ones that open up the CBD receptors or THC CBD. Because when it's mixed with cacarium, which is the active within turmeric, and enhances the power of turmeric by up to 1,000 fold. It's not read reports 2,000 fold, but I'm not yet to be able to see so I'm anything to back that up. Now, Big Pharma uses that recipe, ironically. They take the cacarium synthetically and BCP synthetically, isolate them, put them into a tablet form, and charge $200 for people per tablet suffering from cancer as part of their chemo and remission which you can get to the supermarket for extremely cheap. But also, those two ingredients are very, very powerful anti-inflammatory when combined with cannabis and what I found, honey, which is what I use for my medicine and it's highly effective. It's, I think it's fast acting for pain, but that's just the primary basic one for pain. Of course, you've got to add a lot more, and that's where everyone is so like, get on the internet, start looking into all different types of cannabinoids or photocannabinoids specifically because that's where you're going to find the ones that you can actually bring into your medicine that will re-enhance and capture what you've already lost or you haven't been able to optimise. So I'll take a few questions on that quickly but then I'll tell you what happened to me. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, yeah the, um, what kind of strain do you find that's at the high levels of the well, traditionally, I believe the Afghani strains are really rich in the peppercorns, so like the Afghani regulars are always a good place to start. Um, of course, there's so many variants. There's, apparently, there's more strains of cannabis out there than down in what there are dogs. So that's why I strongly recommend people to sort of do their own homework on that, because it's, it's yeah, there was 89 original anime strains, and the Afghani ones were the richest ones in the pepper. Why the more satina dominant strains, the landmark strains, tend to have a larger cannabinoid profile because of their extended flowering cycle as opposed to an indica dominant? Uh, well, I don't really know to be honest, but I, from what I personally, personal growing experience in 20 odd years of being a user, maybe a famous user, even though most people would have called me stunning for a long time. Um, I honestly believe that the indica dominant strains have more medicinal value for a lot of things, but yet sativa is very good for the cerebral. So I think the sativas came in once more up for the brain and opening up that side of it where the indica ones are more for the body, more whole body kind of effect. Would you, would you find that terpenes like finding or lemonade, which is a Yeah. are you finding that they're in genetics that you're growing that are more sativa dominant because usually the lemonade and the stimulants and usually you get that sort of large sativa. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, I actually do make a uh, mild sativa and it's designed as you're taking it in the morning it's designed to last you all day. For some reason it's, that seems to just keep on lasting. Uh, don't, don't ask me how. Um, I think that's got something to do with the honey actually, the way the receptors open up to it and everything, but I can't, I'm not a scientist, I'm just actually just a bit of a cannabis get to be told, but uh, when it comes to sativa versus indica, I believe that depending on what strain you get, you're going to find what you want, like for example, lemon skunk is a pretty amazing strain, and so is lemon haze, and yet they're very different in their qualities, but yet they're both very limonene dominant in their terms. That would be, that also come down to the phenotype that you're working with as well, or? Sorry? Like, would that also depend on the phenotype that you're working with? You've got lemon skunk, but then it has seeds that, like, parents having children, each of those children are all different, so... Well, it depends, depends, like, a lot of these strains have been stabilised over so many growths that their variants are so like, yeah. uh, As a rule, most of the variants I've found come in how you grow it yourself and how you level experience. Um, whenever you go to a seed bank, everything you'll see is really, really high quality cannabis. And you've got to remember when you look at that, if you, if you grow it as good as that, then you're, you're pretty much a master grower because they've got the best growers that they've got out there growing those strains for those photos. 
and they're picking the best of the best of the best. So it's a hard one because it depends, a lot of it does depend on the grower and it depends on how you treat the plant. Like I could go into how I do it um, and that's actually treating the plant in good way because it's about the frost. And I actually believe that increases the CBD dominancy quite a lot in the cannabis because the TAC is the most dominant to protect it throughout its growth and normally in the last week of its life the CBD normally kicks in. So when you're picking premature, normally you're low in picking the glow of CBD content. But again, it's, and then it also depends how you write now as well. I mean, there's so many variables out there, I don't want to say the wrong answer or, because it's, yeah, it's too hard to answer. Sorry, we're going to get too in depth. Yeah. All right, anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, four, the four primary ingredients, I believe, or well, three, that are the most important is cannabis and, I believe, BCP and turmeric. But then again, I mean, I also believe that having ginger in there is a really good idea. I know some of your own garlic into theirs as well. Can you just mix them all with honey? Just, yeah, I, I, I don't mix it. I, how I, I do honey is a really interesting sort of slide, which is why it's a traditional Chinese medicine is that it will only take in what it needs or what's good. So almost like it can select, like it's almost artificially intelligent, but it's not, obviously. But yeah, it, what, it, what it'll take in, like it won't take in the chlorophyll, but yeah, it'll take in the cacarium, which is also the flavonoid and carbonoid of the cannabis, uh, the chemical, sorry. And that actually lightens up my honey because so I use it quite a dark honey. So, so do you just mix what you need every time, or no, I, no, I actually do um, quite a lot. I do six liters a week, twelve liters a week, depending on how many people do it. Yeah, yeah. If anything, the longer because I'm like a CBD dominant cannabis honey, the longer actually it's kept, and if you keep it in a warm place, it actually turns into a high THC honey. So it's actually like it's really interesting how that happens. But um, you accelerate the natural activity of the plant. So like my last lot that I made was meant to be. Uh, high CBD, and I had it roughly at about 13 or 15 percent, but it actually came in 17 percent THC. That's so, <laughs> and that was on four tests. Yep. I was just going to ask, what's the BCP component of that recipe you were just saying? Uh, BCP is a cannabinoid, or photocannabinoid, as it's found in black cannabinoid, and it's better carifying, and it's uh. It's one of the most powerful cannabinoids out there. It, when mixed with turmeric, it enhances the power of turmeric by a lot. And I've got this personal belief that by, it won't necessarily get you way more stone, but I definitely believe that when it's mixed with cannabis, that it enhances a lot of the other medicinal qualities of cannabis other than THC and CBD. But that's why it's there in the first place, anyway. Because every, every cannabinoid on the plant, the cannabis plant, has a purpose. And every one of them acts differently, and every strain has different amounts and different percentages. Anyone else got a question? Yep. All right. Now I'm going to quickly tell you about what happened to me. This is a story that I think we all need to take in mind that it's worthwhile knowing your rights and being prepared to if you have to do what I didn't do and pay some money and get a lawyer in there ASAP. Um, on Monday, I was down the street in Lismore and the police officer who approached me, who tested me positive road sites really near on three months ago to Canada's, told me I had some paperwork at the police station. And I just laughed at him when he said it, because I said, God, we've got to punch me the balls and yeah, da 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 da. So I went to the police station and they told me I had a warrant for my arrest. And I'm like, for what? And they say to me that I had traffic offences. And I'm like, what traffic offences? And I'm thinking, it can't be this because I haven't received lab work yet. I haven't received a trial work, so I couldn't be going to court. Well, instead of sending out my paperwork, they decided to put it, uh, ask the judge to put out a warrant for my arrest. So, and I was in the police arrested at one o'clock on Monday, and I was released from jail at 11.30 on the Tuesday. Now, I should not have been in jail, it was a non jailable offence. And the police officer just being an absolute power trip because I was not taking this lightly. I was being using my rights to make a police within my legal rights as my rights. 
Um, I've got bad luck, boys. So I get a chance, I guess, to legally give them a bit of check, I do. Um, and yeah, so they decided to lock me up overnight. Now, I went up in front of the judge Tuesday morning, and straight away he said there's no way that I should have been locked up overnight at all. And that uh, the police officer should have bailed me straight away once he'd given me the notice to appear in court. It's more than harassment, it's false imprisonment. So, so what I'm, what I'm going to say to people is that just be mindful that even though we're at the cusp of where we are, we actually are really potentially right now on the verge of a hell of a lot of a bad state of mind. Because I come from an area in Victoria where Chop Chop, we were the last area that had Chop Chop. And believe me, when the feds came in to protect the tax and to protect the industry, they came in harder than what the local police could ever have done. And for seven years, we had free grain on cannabis because there was no tax. Like, you could grow 10 plants in your backyard, the cops come around, and they just look at it, shake their head, and walk away because they just couldn't be stuck dealing with it. Because all they were after was chop chop. And I fear that over the next 12 to 18 months, what happened to me may well be a shot across the bow for how the police are going to treat medical cannabis users. They're going to treat us like scum, and until we get some protection, and we demand protection from our governments of state and federal level, we're going to continue to have this happen to us no matter where you're a 16 year old and with ADHD who needs it to be able to concentrate or someone in chronic pain or someone with terminal illness. We all have an equal right to have our freedom and when the police start taking it from us, then we need to sort of like start waking up to the fact that this is what we've got to make a stand real soon on what this is going to be. Yeah, right. so, so what you're saying is that, excuse the French, but the laws that are coming in, it's all bullshit. It's all about money. Oh, it's all about it's, it's, it's all about People realise that they're going to take their health into their own hands because there's no money in health. You know, if we're looking for cures for how many, how many years now? Well, there's money in health, there's no money in cures and that's giving right. affordable treatment that's going to do what it's meant to do. So what people are going to do is, they've got to grow their own, they've got to bite the bullet. Yeah, they've got to go and announce it. I'll grow a for myself and all of you just keep it personal. You don't get to tell people what your prescription is. So, and you just find genetics that's right for you. You do your own due diligence on the internet, you look at seed veins. It's all very, you know, harsh, harsh. It's very um, stealth, the way they come out to you. And you do your own due diligence, throw your thing from, from seed to the end, make your own oil, get a hold of somebody that can help you with the oil. And they go from there because the way things are going, it's not going to be to our benefit. What about taking it to the next level, my brother, and isolating THC and removing it from the strain? Yeah, see, <laughs> I'm intelligent and I know it can be done. And if you remove THC from marijuana, it no longer gives you any euphoria, it only has anti inflammatory and anti cancer type properties, mate. All these things that the government doesn't believe. I'm sorry, bro. I think we all need to hear this. If we remove THC from the DNA of pot, it's no longer a drug. Right. Um, with the Office of Drug Control, I actually spoke about what are they going to do with carbon noise? Because, like, as a sarcastic question, I asked, are you guys going to ban black pepper corn because it's nice to like carbon noise that we can use in medicine and control it like cannabis? And they just laughed at him. So, the reality is, and you can talk, I mean, like Schedule 8 medicine is going to be rich in THC. Schedule 4 medicine is going to be rich in THC too. But the Schedule 4 medicine is going to have a higher THC. Now, the only so called cannabis, well, it is still what cannabis. It depends on with sleeping problems, though. Depends what you small strain if you're using sativa or handicap to, to find that. But um, with what I'm getting at is that with the cannabis, Actually, you, you're actually not going to try to put off there. Um, sorry, if you have that. I actually... Okay, well, we've got a finish up. We've got a finish up. And we've got another speaker here. Yeah. All right, thank you for your time, everyone. <laughs>